With Ben McKee, Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com, we go around the horn as Tennessee fights off elimination. They beat Notre Dame 12-4 in Game 2 of the Super Regional, setting up a win and you're in, lose and go home showdown for both Tennessee and Notre Dame at 1 o'clock Eastern time on Sunday afternoon. Ben, lots of storylines in Game 2. Uh, we'll get to many of those. I want to start with this one. You and I wondered, or I wondered, how this team would handle the pressure would they sleep well last night how, how would they handle being in their first pressure game they were beautiful today what, what did tony vitello say about his team's preparation and kind of how they handled the loss last night rolling into the day he didn't really address that specifically but said he had the same confidence that he has for for, for any game and that he was excited to get to the stadium today and watch Chase Dolander pitch and be, uh, Dolander making the same pitches that he was essentially making last week uh, against Campbell. He was just seeing more of a reward for the pitches that he was making. Campbell did a really good job last week of fouling a, a lot of those pitches off and running up his pitch count and the outing looked worse than the pitches actually were or, or that his stuff was. And, and tonight he was rewarded or this afternoon, he was rewarded with a really good outing and, and had the results that, that you want to have in, in this time of year. And Tony Vitello talked about it. he was just happy to see Chase Dolander uh, with those results uh, because he pitched about as well as he did last week. Campbell just did a really good job of kind of spoiling it. Now, Luke Lipsius, more to what you're asking, he, he spoke to that and just said that they rolled in with the same confidence that they, that they do every day. And they knew that they needed to stick to what they've done all year. And if they stuck to what they've done all year, then results like today are going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously it was key for Tennessee to get off to the good start. They, they played one in the first inning. Uh, Doe Lender was good in the first inning. Then he really settled in for, for a stretch there where he was really, really good until the offense got going. How, how important was it, do you think, that Tennessee didn't fall behind in this game? We'll get to the fifth inning where, the, where they blew the game wide open. But but given the pressures, given the atmosphere, what you're trying to do, keep your crowd in, how important was it for Tennessee to get off the deck and not be in a two, three run deficit like they've been the last three games? I thought it was huge. I thought it was huge. That way you just don't have that same feeling of, oh boy, here we go again. That, that way you don't have that type of vibe going on. And uh, it, it's a lot easier, as crazy as it sounds, at least at the beginning of the game, when it's nothing, nothing, or you're up by one or two runs, it's obviously a a lot easier to swing the baseball bat and field a ground ball and make your pitches than it is if you're down one, two, three, or one, two, three runs there, uh, because then you start to, to overplay. You start to overswing, and uh, you may make some defensive mistakes that you don't ordinarily make. You start to overthrow on your pitches, and, and that's when you start to lose your command. Uh, so I, I thought it was absolutely huge. I had that thought to myself sitting up in the press box, that, that it was big for Trey Lipscomb to have that double uh, into the left center field gap that scored Seth Stevenson all the way from first just so that Tennessee could kind of exhale. Uh, they, they didn't really need to exhale as it pertains to that particular game, but you just didn't want to start playing baseball with the pressure of your season being on the line after everything that could have gone wrong on Friday did go wrong. You, you didn't want to have that same feeling in the dugout and on the field. So I thought it was absolutely huge, especially when you turn around and you look at who's starting for them. John Michael Petran, who is a two-time All-ACC First Team Pitcher of the Year, a lefty, one of the best pitchers in the country. Uh, you, you thought that he would be a little more crisp today. He wasn't. Like you mentioned, we'll talk about that here in a moment. But you don't want to get behind to that guy. And then it just feels like a real steep hill to overcome. Yeah, and let's get to the fifth inning where, where Tennessee obviously blew this thing open and, and made it uh, more about Notre Dame trying to get to the finish line with their arms and Tennessee trying not to touch the bullpen at all. You mentioned a lefty, and then Luke Lipsius comes in and, and, and goes yard twice in the fifth inning. Um, that was Tennessee baseball in the fifth. I mean, there was blood in the water, and, and, and Tennessee was – Tennessee was in attack mode in, in all forms in that fifth inning uh, to, to really let everybody in the in the stadium exhale, let them know, hey, we're coming back Sunday to play another one. Uh, what, what did you see out of Tennessee? Was their approach different in the fifth? Was that just a tired uh, arm from Notre Dame? Was that Tennessee just getting a beat on him, him making some mistakes? What did you see out of this Tennessee offense in the fifth? A little bit of everything. Uh, I, I do think John Michael Petrand, as I've said a million times this week, the most Notre Dame name 
of all time. Sounds like he should be a linebacker for the Fighting Irish. Um, but he threw 105 pitches, I believe it was, last Sunday night against Texas Tech down in Statesboro that won them the Statesboro Regional to send them up here. And he's typically the Friday guy. He started the Friday game, but the game was suspended after the first inning due to weather. And you don't bring your starting pitchers back after a lengthy rain delay if they've already started. So they held they held him for Sunday. He pitches well, throws over 100 pitches. And then on short rest, I, I know six days to, to Major League Baseball seems like nothing, but these these arms are conditioned to throw once every seven days uh, for, for him every Friday. And his routine a little bit off this week because of the, the weather last weekend and uh, them trying to give him an extra day off and pitching on Saturday. So I did think that his command probably wasn't what it typically is. Now, he doesn't have a lot of walks, but I was looking at his stats before the game, and he had allowed 84 hits in 99 innings, which you would not think he had given up 84 hits on the season when you look at his ERA, you look at his record, you look at the opponent batting average. Uh, so that was a little bit surprising. And then I, I could kind of see why tonight is I don't, I don't think he has the stuff to navigate elite offenses like a Tennessee lineup. And he even said so himself after the game that Tennessee, uh, when he when he would make the slightest mistake, Tennessee would take advantage of it. So I think a little bit of it was was him being a little fatigued just because of the oddness of the week that he had had. I think it was Tennessee having much better mindsets at the plate. And I think it was just simply not playing with nerves in their system. I think they tried to do too much at the beginning of last night's game when they did have opportunities to put a crooked number on the board and just weren't able to come through. They just... They, they waited for their pitch. They, they searched out good pitches to hit, and, and they certainly did. Luke Lipsius, a fastball on the inside of the part of the plate, hits it off the top of the batter's eye. Uh, then uh, I, I believe it was – I can't remember. It, it was so many hits ago. But <laughs> eventually Jordan Beck hits the, the three-run homer. It was Courtland Lawson hits the double that ricochets off the glove into the outfield, and then uh, he, he's able to reach, and you're able to set the scene – uh, for Jordan Beck, the guy that just walked behind me in this video, and he just absolutely crushed uh, a three-run home run a little later in the inning that that really opened up the floodgates. And uh, from there, it was a little bit of Notre Dame not w wanting to wave the white flag today, but also not wanting to, to burn through all of its top options out of the bullpen because at that point you're probably going to play a game on Sunday. So I, I think it was a little bit of everything. But Tennessee's bats, it, it was what – it was the bats that we've become accustomed to all season long. Yep, that was certainly the Tennessee offense that that Tennessee fans have been expecting, and quite frankly, that was the pitching performance Tennessee fans have been expecting, and one they had to have today. Let's now set the scene for tomorrow, one o'clock. Everything's on the line. You're playing for a trip to Omaha, the mecca of college baseball. Tennessee's pitching rotation is 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 pretty wide open. I mean, they've got quite a few options there to go with. Notre Dame, not necessarily as many. Notre Dame's announced their starter. They're going with a right-hander. What's Tony Vitello and the Vols plan tomorrow on the on the bump for the Volunteers? As Tony has said the last several weeks when it came down to, to Sunday or the final game of the weekend, final game of Hoover, uh, he, he didn't have much to say. Just, just said that all hands are on deck. And, look, that's the way he should play it. Um, Notre Dame, as you mentioned, announced their starter. A righty with a 2-0 record, a plus-4 ERA. Simon, first name, last name, something like that. Uh, so he, he's one of their more top arms out of the bullpen. And Link Jarrett was talking after the game and said that his last couple of outings have been really good. So uh, they're confident in what he's going to bring to the table. And uh, they, they did have a guy that ate up a good chunk of those later innings after it had gotten blown out. So uh, Link Jarrett said that they felt pretty good uh, with where they were at in, in the bullpen looking towards tomorrow. And I certainly think that what Chase Dolander was able to do to go out and throw 112 pitches. And typically, if it was a regular season game, with the way the score was, you probably don't let him go as far as he did. But you're not going to bring him back on Sunday, obviously. And you let him eat up that sixth and seventh inning, uh, especially with how well he was pitching, so that you don't have to – you can only pitch Mark McGlough from the eighth and ninth inning. That, that was the benefit of Chase Dolander throwing 112 pitches is that you only had to bring Mark McLaughlin in, into the game and you didn't have to bring Kirby in or somebody like a Kirby Cannell. It, it was Mark McLaughlin and, and Chase Dolander today, and that certainly helped. It, it kept Chase Burns on the table. I don't think Camden Sewell would have come back and pitched today anyways, but Camden threw 20 pitches or so Friday night. He's certainly an option tomorrow. That would be the option that I roll with, but 
Uh, they've continued to roll with Drew Bean. We'll see if they continue to do that. I, I certainly think Chase Burns is the option. It'll be one of those three. Uh, and, and all three, I, I would imagine, pitch in some capacity uh, unless whoever gets the ball just takes over and dominates the game. Th then you don't necessarily need to because Kirby still hasn't pitched this weekend. Revin, uh, he has not pitched either unless he pitched last night at, towards the end. I don't think that he did. Uh, Will Mabry, he can probably come back and get you a guy or two. You're really fresh in the bullpen. Uh, you're not going to have Ben Joyce available, not play Tidwell, not Chase Dolander, probably not Mark McLaughlin. Other than that, it, it really is all hands on deck and everybody's uh, available. But I, I wonder if you'll you'll see Chase Burns start the game tomorrow um, because he hasn't been used this weekend. Camden has been used this weekend. And quite frankly, he's been more effective and, and his command has been better of late than it than it has been for Drew Beam. Interesting, though, if you if you start Burns, you're basically, to me, you're taking Drew Beam out of the equation for the weekend because I think in his one bullpen appearance, he did not seem very comfortable. Now, I'm not saying he can't come in and do it, but you roll with that experiment in, in your last home series, I guess, against Auburn. That did not seem to go well. Does it make more sense to start Beam, but he's got a quick hook because Burns has shown he can get himself ready to come out of the pen? Then you got Camden Sewell, who, you know, sent that text message in Hoover, Ben, that said, give me the baseball. I want the baseball. I would imagine he's probably going to ask for the baseball again. Pretty fascinating decision for Tony Vitello. And Frank Anderson will be a part of that. He won't be on the bench tomorrow to, to help navigate that. But certainly he'll be a part of the conversation tonight and making that decision. Interesting choices to me that Tony Vitello has, don't you think? Absolutely. Uh, Drew Beam probably needs to have a, a quick hook just because his command has not been the same the last month and a half as it was the first month and a half of the season. And that's not his fault. Uh, you, you don't pitch your final two years of high school and you come out and you throw 60 innings the first half of your true freshman season, you're going to run into a wall. And I certainly think he has run into that wall. Chase Burns ran into the same wall, but Chase Burns has been able to bounce back a little bit better than Drew Beam. So I, I love what Drew Beam has given Tennessee this year. I would just have a hard time throwing him out there, given his recent struggles with command the last month, month and a half. It's not the last outing or two. I mean, it's well documented now, a month, month and a half of the season that he struggled with his command. I would have a hard time throwing him out there in any situation, to be quite frank. I would have loved to have seen Beam in last night when Camden Sewell came in. That way you let Beam eat up some of those later innings when you were trying to crawl back into the game. Uh, and then now you have a Camden Sewell who hasn't thrown any pitches ready to go on Sunday start Sewell, go to Burns and Redman, Kirby out of the bullpen after Sewell. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I certainly agree with your point, though, that, that Burns has handled the bullpen better than Beam. I, I will be very curious to see if Beam is in the pitching plans at all. I think you're definitely going to get some variation of Burns, Sewell. Where does Drew Beam fit into that equation, if at all? I think that's really the only question aside from what do the exact roles of uh, Burn, Burns and, and Sewell look like. I, I would roll with Kim Sewell, especially him being a veteran, uh, and, and he's been better than the other two the, the last month, month and a half of the season. I, I would roll with Camden Sewell. He only threw 20 pitches or so. He, he should be able to come back and uh, be ready to go at 1.06 p.m. Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. Yep, and uh, Camden Sewell did not pitch in the regional, so he's thrown 20 pitches in about two weeks is what it's fresh. To. He should be uh, pretty fresh at this point. Bottom line is Tennessee's playing again, and, and they have fought off elimination with a big win over Notre Dame. They did it without their, uh, their voice in center field. Um, Drew Gilbert, who will be back, they did it with the long ball, minus Gilbert. Uh, in a very Tennessee-like fashion as the Volunteers take care of business, do what they have to do on Saturday to force Sunday and what should be a wild atmosphere at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. We'll have it all covered for you as this is going to do it for this edition of Around the Horn. He is Ben McKee from Lindsey Nelson Stadium. I'm Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com.